Welcome to Dying Generation, Episode 3. I'm Bunny Williams, and right next to me in another state is... Stephen Scott Norfolk. <laughs> I, I didn't mess it up this time. No, no, you did good. <laughs> um, Do I get a puppy um, treat now? <laughs> a puppy treat? <laughs> Of course. Of course you do. <laughs> you get a pat on the head and a good boy. <laughs> uh, so I, I heard back from iTunes, okay? Mm-hmm. And they rejected it because I said, fuck in the description. And that'll, Probably that'll show up. That'll show up in the store. Yeah. So they don't want it on the store. But, you know, I'll just, change it and, you know, email and say, hey, thanks, change it, and let them know that I've changed it for them to check again, you know, so, you know. Well, did you see my description I put up? Uh, I don't think so. I'm not sure. I'll I'll have to send it to you. It was was pretty good, and no offensive language there, Bunny. Uh, All I really have to do is change, Change like... Change to mast? Something like that, exactly. Yeah. You know, um, but I'm working on Steve Galindo's Reverend Steve's thing, the, yeah. the Pope on film. So I'm working on the, the cover video. And what I came up with, because I'm in a spot where I'm doing like our little ads and shit, uh-huh. um, two old guys swap stories of their view, their view of the grave and how the world keeps turning and turning. That sounds good. And a little on the vague side, a little on the spooky side. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So now real quick before we get away from iTunes, remember whenever iTunes was like the hippie computer? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now they're, and now they're the man. Yeah. And, that, yeah. and isn't it funny? Just like we always knew, Max is starting to, to get viruses. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, because what it was, everybody was like, Macs don't get viruses. Yeah, because they're only 10% of the market, so nobody programs viruses for Macs. Just like Linux doesn't get viruses because nobody programs viruses for Linux. You know? You you, you attack the biggest contender. You attack the thing that you, you know, that has the most computers using it, so you take down the most computers. Exactly. Uh-huh. You know? Mm-hmm. And stuff. And now so they're, now they're starting to get viruses. Yep. And now all those Mac <laughs> people have to. <laughs> now all those Mac people have to shut the fuck up. You uh-huh. heard me. You heard it right here on Dying Generation, ladies and gentlemen. We we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, you know, we'll, we enjoy your we enjoy your comments on the YouTube page. So go ahead and post those. <laughs> you know I, I, that whole it just works. You know, that's kind of cute and shit, you know, but I'm really kind of tired of it. I never thought I would be bigoted against a computer. <laughs> you know? Yeah, no. You want to hear the my one, funny Mac? The other, one, the other one just works if you know how to press some buttons. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, my funny Mac window story is I have a friend of mine who's a filmmaker, this guy Steve. Yes, another Steve. And uh, the world is full of them. I called him one night. And I'm like, hey, what's up? And he's like, God damn fucking stupid windows. I fucking hate stupid windows. God damn it. And I'm like, why? What's going on? He said, stupid fucking windows. He said, I'm trying to print out this ticket from Expedia, and we'll only print out half the goddamn fucking ticket, stupid fucking windows. I was like, okay, do you have a Mac? You have a Mac, right? He said, yeah. I said, why don't you print it out on the Mac? Oh, I couldn't get the printer installed. Oh, but stupid (laughs) fucking windows. That is fucking priceless. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> stupid fucking windows. At least stupid fucking windows installed the printer and is printing something. <laughs> Once again, leave your comments on the YouTube page. We'd love to hear from you. I figure once I get, you know, that's like something on my list of things to do. You know, I'm just taking everything step by step the best I can. But um, putting up a Facebook group for Dying Generation. That would be good. You know, 
because you know what a what a what a uh, uh, what do you call it a a marketing just cornucopia that Facebook is now with all the new algorithms and everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can't you can't you can't market for crap. They've pretty much made it to where you have to buy their ads. Mm-hmm. So that would be a good idea. Yeah, I think a Facebook thing, you know, get the kiddies all wound up about it. Yeah. Let's listen uh, to the hey, let's go listen to the old fuckers. And speaking yeah, of old know, fuckers. But you know but but if they come to listen to the Pope of Ed Wood they find out about us, you know? Yeah. So I kind of feel, I kind of feel like I'm sort of, I'm setting up dominoes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Set them up and hold down. Yeah. Well, you know, so if one clicks with somebody, you know, something in particular catches a vibe, you know? Yeah. Then they all find out about the, all the other shows. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know? So I'm hoping, and you know, then people get to become a fan of of whoever's doing it, you know. Yeah. And in this case, I'm talking about me, you know, because I'm putting it all together, and then yeah. they follow everything I do. You know. Yeah. I mean, that's oh, yeah. kind of how that goes. Definitely. Like there are there are rabid uh, trauma fans. Oh yeah. Big you know? time. They are and there are like, devotees. Yeah, I, I mean I like a trauma film from time to time, but you know not as like a regular meal. You know. Yeah. You don't want to have to eat the same pussy over and over again. What's that? Is what you're saying? I said you don't want to have to eat the same pussy over and over again. Is what you're saying? Exactly. 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 I'd like some strange occasionally. <laughs> so so a friend of mine and I were talking uh, last night about the origins of the word whippersnappers. Whippersnappers. You know, like, yeah, you know, like, you, you know, whippersnappers, get off my lawn. Yeah. Uh-huh. And uh, apparently, I heard, anyway, somebody can correct me on this in the YouTube comments, but apparently it comes from some type of toy that was popular during the 20s or 30s that made, like, a whip-cracking sound. And these, it was like all the rage with the kids, and so they started referring to these kids as whippersnappers. Huh. And I mean, that might have even been the name of the product. I'm not sure, but that's what I always heard. And another thing, I am googling. <laughs> I have I have always waited for the new millennium. Do you know why? Why? So I could be like an uh, uh, old uh, what is it a niner forty niner or whatever the the minor forty niners and be like. You know, yeah. I remember back in aught nine. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I've been waiting for that. It was like you know, just growing up. I was like, I cannot wait to tell people. That. And I tell kids that today, and they don't believe me. <laughs> Sometimes the audio on my side cuts out. But I've Does never it? heard it recorded that way when I listen to the recordings. Yeah, yours so cut out sometimes too. If I ever seem to laugh non committal, it's probably because I didn't have any I didn't hear anything you said. I know out. Steve just said something funny, so I'm gonna chuckle. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's kind of it, because when I listen <laughs> back to the audio when I listen back to the audio that has well, I haven't heard you. Yeah. Um when I listen back to the audio, when I'm working on it and stuff, that doesn't happen. The audio still picks up. Yeah. It's hell getting old, isn't it? <laughs> but, yeah, uh, technology, boy, the more the more they improve things, the more they fuck things up. Yeah. Uh, you know? Get, kitties, getting old is kind of like this. Shit, what hurts now? <laughs> exactly. Let me tell you about my sciatica. I didn't you know, even what, know that could hurt. What hurts now? Why doesn't that get hard anymore? And where the hell did I leave my car keys? That's that's <laughs> pretty much getting old. I just can't wait to get old enough to get one of those scooters, you know, the, the rascals. 
and be cruising along. I was talking to my brother about uh, my mom has been talking about getting one. She's in her 70s. Oh, and she's rascals. been talking about getting, getting the rascals, you know, the little scooter things for old people. Yeah, that caused a lot of uh, a lot of cross filing. I had to pass through the little rascals and <laughs> in the rascals. Before you I got to, to the wheelchair to, thing, you had to dig deep for that. Was that it? Deep, deep in the vault. I, I did. So young is still lurking back there somewhere. Yeah. But the grave is just getting a lot closer. Yeah. <laughs> so I hear you. But I, me and my brother were talking that uh, my mom would be the kind of, of person who would be on the rascal, like on the uh, shoulder of the freeway. You know, yeah. smacking, smacking, bypassing cars with her cane, yelling at them to slow down and stuff. You know. Just down the road, <laughs> you know, with their honk if you're Jesus bumper sticker, everybody honking at her, honk, honk, oh, look, there goes Jesus. <laughs> so did you find whippersnappers? The word of the day, kitties. I, I found whippersnappers, and I'm just not finding any really good references to it. Yeah. You know, um, Wikipedia is just saying he's a young, impertinent person. Thanks. I thought that was a pun. I do have an urban dictionary. It's strange. It's strange how the name for young impertinent person changes over the decades, isn't it? Yes, it is. I was kind of hoping for like examples of what a whippersnapper is. Yeah. You know, as opposed to them just redefining it for me. And I don't even remember where I heard this. I just heard it and and was, you know, interested by that, you know. It's sort of like the uh, Hudsucker proxy, you know, where the yeah. guy draws a circle on the piece of paper and goes, it's for kids, and then it turns out to be a Frisbee. It turns out to be a hula hoop. It turns out, you know. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's for kids, so the whippersnapper. If anybody finds out the true definition of whippersnapper, leave it on the YouTube page for us. We'd like to uh, come back to this subject because it's so fascinating. <laughs> I'm sure the listeners are just on the edge of their seat waiting to hear what whippersnapper came from. Uh, I am sure they are. Because you know what? <laughs> I am. <laughs> They're on the edge of their seats waiting to click them out. See, I was kind of thinking, like, once I get my DVDs done, uh-huh. which I, I'm not even sure where that is on the list. Like, I'm just taking Sweet Splasher and uh, Smokes. Yeah. Yeah. And putting them on a DVD, just two shorts, you know. No uh, pig book of whatever it was? What? What was the first one about the box? Pig Machophobia? Well, yeah. the first one was the one with Shauna. Oh, yeah, pills. <laughs> And I think I think that that both of our first films are, are of equivalent uh, quality. <laughs> well, yeah, but you know what? I have such fond memories for it just being a, a new and bizarre place to be in my life. Yeah, you know? to be filmmaking, to actually be doing filmmaking, and having an actress show up. Yeah, and, just and being a like fine ass actress too. Good God. Yeah, exactly. And we didn't and pay her anything. Good job. You know what my no, favorite was... part of the story is? What? Is she shows up at a house, two guys she's never met before, and we go, come on down to the basement. And she just follows us. <laughs> you know, it was like, you know, we could be hacking your body up right now. You know, you have no idea. Follow us down into the basement. Come on, it'll be okay. Now, what we want you to do is we want you to eat all these pills. <laughs> You know, so if you haven't seen the uh, the uh, short films, where can they see them, Bunny? Uh, they are at, on YouTube under Undead Cow Films. And if you want to see my short films, uh, pitiful as they are, you can go to youtube.com slash user slash WP2000. I should make a playlist of yours, too. So, yeah. But, um... Oh, man, what was it? Uh, Colorado? What, what would we, Colorado, Colorado, yeah. Uh, pills? Skin cold. Oh, mom, mom, pills. Mom, yeah, mom in your she, life? Yeah, that's where I was. She she was she was also Googling on her phone about eating cotton. 
<laughs> yeah, because I yeah, cause I told her a story about how supermodels apparently eat cotton balls when they go out drinking at night so they can drink a lot because the cotton balls soak up the alcohol. Okay. And I heard this from, like, one of the supermodels. I can't remember who it was. I was like, okay, first of all, how in the hell do you swallow a cotton ball? <laughs> You know, wouldn't that wouldn't that take some? I mean, I I want to date that girl, you know, because that's that's apparently some throat suction right there to be able to choke down a cotton ball. <laughs> yeah, I just couldn't. I, I I just couldn't kind of fathom the idea that anybody would do that. I mean, there was not a bit bit of fat on this girl at all. Yeah. You know, yeah, she was uh, she was quite the tasty treat. <laughs> so, and of uh, course, there was the uh, time when you were filming the uh, green screens for Sheila Demise that I got your actress drunk and you got all pissed off at me. <laughs> so I said, who, "I said, who wants a a rum and coke?" And then yeah. I suddenly realized that she's been like sneaking upstairs and like swigging straight off the bottle. And stuff, and, and and she's like, you know, shit face, stinking drunk, and and slurring her words and stuff, and falling over, and yeah. And I I told her to wear something sexy. Yeah. What the fuck? Like, and what did she wear? About as far away from sexy as you could get. You was know? it like was it was it like sweatpants and a baggy T-shirt or something? I don't remember. No, it was some fairly short white shorts, which was, you know, nice. Yeah. Um, and then a uh, light blue and white striped polo. So your brain's not as deteriorated as mine is because I just definitely don't even – I don't even remember what that chick looked like. Yeah. You know, I remember getting a boner, but – She could pull off sexy, but she was just not – Especially when she was drunk, huh? Especially when she was drunk, yeah. She was she was slovenly drunk. It was it was yeah. It was pretty embarrassing. <laughs> I felt bad, and so I thought I'd follow that up by knocking over a set of your lights when I was drunk on the set of uh, on the set of uh, what was it? Smokes. Was it smokes? That was smokes. Yeah. Yeah. Where we got where we got some great production value when it started raining. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, it was raining yes, it too, was hammering down rain. <laughs> I I took quite a bit of just stock footage of the rain. Yeah. Well, well, I was just like, take it, take it. <laughs> I have stock footage of rain. Yeah, well, that's like yeah. the the time we went to go uh, do my film motel room, and I go up to the woman and she's like Korean or Vietnamese or Laotian or something like that in the office. And I uh, pay my hundred dollars to use the the room for like four hours, six hours, something like that. Told her we we're making a movie, and she hands me the key and goes, "Don't break the bed." <laughs> so, what kind of movie do you think we're making here? Don't break the bed. Yeah. You know, don't break the bed. I mean, that's that's going to yeah. be the title of my autobiography. Don't break the bed. <laughs> Either that, or now I have to write the fucking thing. I, I, I don't I don't have a title for my biography, but I have chosen a theme song. Which is? Kung Fu Fighting. Ah, there you go, Kung Fu Fighting. I mean, I, I wonder how much it costs to license something to just be your theme song. Well, it would be like, <laughs> be like uh, Undercover, or not Undercover Brother, uh, I'm Gonna Get You Sucker, where the guy's got the band following him. Who's, who are those guys? Well, it's my theme yeah. music. <laughs> I love that movie. One of the yeah. funniest damn movies. Yeah. Then I'll then I'll 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 rent a kid outside of wherever I'm going. Yeah. Give him whatever today's equivalent of a boombox is. And have him follow you around with it. Have him play kung fu. Start playing kung fu fighting. Walk into wherever I'm going. And I'll let the music play a bit, and then I'll walk in. Yeah, then then what you want, the equivalent of the beatbox today, I believe, is the Beats pill. Have you seen this thing? Looks like a giant Tylenol. 
It sounds familiar, yeah. Yeah, it is, it is loud as hell. It is the most impressive piece of portable musical equipment I have ever seen. Really? Yeah, I mean, it puts out just, I mean, it's like a Bose system. It puts out just beautiful, full, loud sound that's just crisp and clear. Yeah. And there's our first sponsor. You can go ahead and send us a free uh, Beats pill uh, anytime. Uh, Steve will give you the P.O. box if you want to message us. And yeah, while we're at it, I, 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 you, you know, whenever you, you pimp somebody's product on, their, on your show, they usually send you, like, a free one. Okay. And stuff, yeah. you know. So I'd, also, so I'd also like to thank Bacardi Rum. <laughs> so just go ahead and send that case on over, and uh, it'll be a good time with our beef still and our Bacardi rum. <laughs> Maybe some of that Colorado green. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> tell me, tell me about, tell me about the adventures in pot smoking lately, Steve. Anything good up there? The adventures in pot smoking? Well, like, I, like we've talked before about how the strains, I, I don't notice any difference between like one strain or another. It's really how much I can stand to get in my lungs at any given time. Yeah. You know? So, like, the bong's okay, you know? Maybe I can make a better one or something like that, but it, it's, I don't have the time for that. Every now and then I'll, I'll buy um, some loose joints. Uh, and a joint will last me, like, three or four days. You know? Three or four days? You <laughs> yeah. friggin' lightweight. Uh, but when I first light it, it's really pretty good. It's nice and easy. I can get a lot of smoke into my lungs and things like that and be smoking it very close to how I would smoke a cigarette. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. But, but then after I put that out and let that settle in and stuff, I go back now further down. It's more resonated. So I like that. And it's just like, try to hold on. <laughs> you know. So in other and words, like, if you wanna if you wanna learn how to suck a dick real good, get a resonated <laughs> joint and try to take a drag <laughs> off it. Is that what you're saying, Steve? Bunny, is that what you're saying? Well, I think we should uh we should we should say that and work on that idea a bit later because, you know, um Let's take the whole the whole resonated joint cock sucking thing, and maybe we can make a like a full article out of it. And then after a while, we'll just put out our own self help book full of that shit. There you go. Yeah, dude. First article in Maxim, you know, mm-hmm. or Playgirl actually, or or Better Housekeeping. Uh-huh. You know, Better Housekeeping. Yes. Yeah, Better Housekeeping. How to suck a cock like a pro. Red book. You know, of course, we already know. I already know Ron Jeremy, so it's like Ron Jeremy teaches you how to suck cock. Yeah, tell us about the new your video, with Ron Jeremy. Ron Jeremy is the sweetest, nicest person I have ever met. That was a famous person. He was so much fun to be around, except that I totally felt sorry for any woman, any woman that was near him, because they don't call him the hedgehog for nothing. They should call him the hound dog, okay? Because he was on that pussy so hard. It wasn't, and, and, and if it looked over 18, he was like, hi, how you doing? And Ron's like, you know, 60 something years old and not in the best of shape. Sorry, Ron, but it's true. And stuff, but we, uh, went and picked him up at the airport when we shot our, uh, scenes with him for our new movie, Getting Schooled. And, uh, picked him up at the airport. We're walking through the airport and it was great because people were like, hey, Ron, how's it going? You know, like they were buddies and stuff. And he's just waving and stuff. And of course, me and my brother are like, yeah, we're with Ron Jeremy. That's right, goddammit. You know, walking like pimps and stuff. Yeah. And then we get out and then, and, and, you know, we're like, hey, Ron, we're going to take you to the hotel, but you want to, you want to get some food first, you know? And he was like, yeah. So we go to this barbecue place. And of course, not everybody, but plenty of people are like, hey, Ron, can I get a picture with you and stuff? And, we sat out and ate barbecue, and and it was funny too because we're sitting there. We have, you know got Ron whatever he he got, and then I got something different, and my brother got something different, and Ron uh-huh. is like you know pretty much just like picking off your plate, you know just reaches over and like grabs a rib. Hey, those look good, yeah. you know <laughs> and stuff. And and then we get in the car, and then me and Ron have a joke off, 
where we're just telling dirty jokes back and forth for like the 20 something minutes that it takes to get to the hotel and stuff. But yeah, we yeah. had a great time. And then we had a uh, reception <clears throat> with them so people could meet Ron Jeremy and stuff. Uh-huh. And he was, uh, yeah, I had a great time with him. Uh, really, really good actor. Uh, surprisingly, uh, people don't know he's been doing horror films for like the last, what, 10, 15 years. And he's actually a very uh, yeah, good a actor. Yeah, he's actually a very good actor and a really genuine, just really down-to-earth kind of guy. I mean, you know, we got him a room at the Hilton and stuff, and he was, I mean, not pretentious at all. It was, yeah, it was a great experience. And uh, we got him we, we got him for a decent rate. I can't say how much, but not yeah. as much as you expect to get Ron Jeremy to come and, you know, film like an entire film, which all the stuff for Haunted Trail was shot in one day. All the stuff for Getting School was shot in one day, so one day, but... You know, you've got Ron Jeremy in your movie. Mm-hmm. You know, the only drawback being that our distributors decided, in the original artwork that we had for Haunted Trailer, okay, we had right. the cast, which was Mama and Elvis and Aaron and Prissy and Reverend Wiggums, and which are the main characters in the film. And then uh-huh. floating above them was Ron Jeremy's head, and it said, you know, all the stars' names, and it said, Fe- and featuring Ron Jeremy as the demon, right? Well, uh-huh. so the the distribution company decides that what they're going to do is enlarge Ron Jeremy's head on the cover and put in huge letters across the top, Ron Jeremy. Right. So now Best Buy I won't carry it in their stores. Neither will Target. All these other stores that are refusing to carry it in their stores because of the name Ron Jeremy. <laughs> you can get it on you can get it on their website. You can get it on BestBuy.com and Target.com and Fries.com. And Fries is the only store like here in Texas, Fries Electronics. I don't know if they're up there or not doing it, but they have Haunted Trailer actually on the shelves. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, great experience. So if you're making a film and you want a good actor who's really funny. Uh, but can also do some dramatic stuff, and, you know, you got a little bit of money to spend, not a lot, but a little bit, contact Ron Jeremy. Great guy to work with and uh, really just a solid actor. Cool. And take it, Steve. I I would love to hear some of the stories from when he worked with Troma, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Because I'm pretty sure he might have done one or two others, but uh, – Terra Firma was a fairly good hit for Trauma. Yeah. You know, and Ron Jeremy was in that. Um, so, yeah, I I always like a good Lloyd Kaufman story. You know? Yeah. He might not have, he might not have tried to rip off Ron Jeremy, though, because you don't know. I mean, I don't, I'm not sure what kind of connections he might have with the mob anymore. <laughs> you know? There you go. I mean, come on, the, porn, the porn industry grew out of it. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, speaking of the mob, I was thinking about this the other night. Have you ever read yeah. Snow Crash by Neil Stevenson? I listen to it as an audio book. I don't get as much out of an audio book as I do if I actually read it. So yeah. So they're kind of like parts I remember and parts that don't. But there's the the whole part about how the uh, the guy, the main character, the hero, is a pizza delivery guy. And yeah. at the beginning of the book, he's racing to get this pizza there because, you know, all the pizza joints are owned by the mafia. And if you're late with the pizza, <laughs> <laughs> they don't just get it free. It's your ass. Mm-hmm. And I just thought that was like a hilarious twist that all the pizza parlors were owned by the mob. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uncle Enzo or something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's pretty crazy stuff. So, Neil Stevenson, people, if you haven't heard of him, you definitely need to read his books. They are amazing. I'm currently reading... Uh, the Baroque Cycle by him, which is a trilogy of books, total of about 2,700 pages Yeah, about the birth of science out of alchemy and Victorian in England. And uh, okay. it's, pretty, yeah. it, it's, it's pretty damn fascinating. Well, I don't think it's Victorian England. I think it's um, King Louis V in France. It's during his reign. 
and just fascinating. The writing is incredible, and all the, you know, the the humor in it is like really great if you're any kind of science buff or anything, because you're talking about all these like really weird, stupid, brainless experiments that they're doing that we all, as kids who took science in the third grade you know, know how this stuff works already. So to us, it's like a real chuckle. But these were the people who discovered the things that we learned, you yeah. know, <laughs> and stuff. And so it's, it's actually a really fascinating series of books. So what's our social? Like what's, a, what? No, go ahead. I was just saying that sounds like a good book. Yeah. It's an yeah. excellent book. Yeah, and the writing is really great. I, I don't often do, like, a lot of period sort of stuff, you know. Yeah. But I, I've read a couple, you know. Yeah, well, this has a, a what do you call it? I, I can't remember what they're called now anyways, but this guy named Half Cock Jack who probably, you know, pretty much travels the world and is kind of like a pirate and uh, falls in love with this woman who's in the court of King Louis the the 14th or whatever. And, uh, yeah, it's uh Sounds so that part sounds really boring, but I actually uh-huh. found the social part of it like you're snickering and stuff just at how people used to act. Yeah, you know, and what polite society was at that point and stuff. It's it's ridiculous. They're they're talking about how people are walking around with pieces of black felt like glued to their face as like some sort of fashion thing. Yeah, that I guess was to cover up pock marks from the Black Plague. And it became this fashion thing to wear these these pieces of felt glued to your face. Really? Yeah, oh, that's what man. I'm saying. The book is just fascinating with with those kind of details and stuff, and and the writing. Like I said, the writing is just incredible. Yeah. So. Yeah, that that does sound good. What else was I thinking about, though, man? I smell smoke. Something's burning. Something's burning. <laughs> uh, it's just me trying to have a full thought. <laughs> <laughs> Did you derail your train of thought? Several times. Um, so the ne- the next thing to do is to try to set up going to feed burner, which from what I understand, you... You do your own feed, and mm-hmm. then you submit that to FeedBurner, and then you submit that to iTunes so that that can track it. Oh, okay. So you can see how many yeah, how many or whatever you're getting. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. I mean, Very YouTube cool. would it, would be its own beast. It would have it would have that facility itself. How many views and shit like that? Yep. Last um, time I checked, we had 15 views. Woo! It's on fire, people. We're getting rich. <laughs> mm-hmm. And the first time I played it, there was no ad on it. But then the second time I played it, so I'm two of the 15 hits. Uh, it showed an ad at the beginning. So, come on, people, watch our stuff. We need revenue. We're we're, we're starving artists here. Yeah. Uh, it, um, I'm living in my car, for God's sakes. <laughs> yes. Throw a brother a bone. Um. Yeah. So then we can track what we're putting out is audio. Mm-hmm. You know. But at the same time I'm thinking I'm probably gonna call GoDaddy. Yeah. Because they they probably have AW stats that they can just install. So yeah. I'm gonna have to find out how much that that's gonna cost me. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But then I can track when each of the individual thought oh what well, at least they should be able to uh, track when each of the individual audio files have been opened. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Is the wind causing distortion here? Uh, just a little bit. Just a little bit? Like my brother yeah. called it my gale force lift. <laughs> you have a gale force lift. And now my car's dead. Oh, that's why I left my headlights on. I was trying to figure out why my battery's dead. Oh, so shit. my damn headlights on. Son of a mother of. So I'm going to have to charge that up so I can get my house moving. So when I, I go to really? work. Uh, hoping to, yeah. I oh, uh, went and looked at it. Well, I mean, you know, my house, my car. 
yeah. so I can get my car moving so I can go to work uh, whenever I work next. But, yeah, I did uh, actually go look at a studio apartment over in Alvin, Texas. Uh, if we have any listeners in Alvin, in Alvin, hi to you. How's it going? <laughs> and uh, looked at it. it. It's a pretty nice little place and uh, hoping to uh, put down a deposit and stuff on it next Tuesday and move in on the 14th. And then I can right. get my woman down here. Okay. Is get that still the younger there. one? The 19-year-old, yeah. Uh, and before you people judge, she picked me. I did not pick her. I had. <laughs> I told her she, she asked me if I would go out with her, and I told her I'd have to think about it for a couple of days. Yeah. And so I did and uh, spent a couple of days with her and decided that, yeah, she was, uh, you know, pretty. It, it's interesting because she's very childlike in the way that she acts. But she's very mature in the way that she thinks. Yeah. You know, she was living in the worst section of Houston, this place called Acres Homes. And uh-huh. it's notorious for being the worst crime ridden, gang ridden area of Houston and stuff. And she was living there, so she's definitely got her street smarts and stuff yeah. and has grown and has grown up about, you know, knowing that you know, she has to work and earn money and, and stuff like this, so but uh yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be interesting because, you know, she's a little little ball of energy and you know, I'm decrepit old man. And mm-hmm. so uh she tells me to keep to stop saying that. She was like, Don't say that <laughs> Actually what she actually first what she says is, What's decrepit? <laughs> so we gotta we gotta work on the vocabulary a little bit. <laughs> but uh but yeah, she's a sweet girl and just loves me, loves me, loves me. Yeah. And stuff. So hoping to hear from her tonight. And so, how are you? How how's it uh, going with you and the jeans, sir? Did she love you like a rock? She does. Yes. Love you like a rock. Over Even though it doesn't get as hard as a rock anymore, she loves me like one. <laughs> uh, things are going good with uh, Jean and I. So, um. She listens to the show, doesn't she? Thank you. Uh, she, <laughs> she does. And she, she does, in it. fact. She is um, an angel. I love her so much. She is my world. <laughs> she she loves it. Uh, we have... What have we been doing? We've been having bad luck getting to the red-headed zombie shows. Yeah. You know, uh, this month, she forgot her purse. And the redheaded zombie show was going to be in the underground. Yeah. Downtown. Have um, to have your ID. And she didn't. Yeah. So we had to turn around and leave the month before the night of the show. The venue that they were going to play in canceled. So it's just. Not oh yeah. Luck. Yeah. But um. Last weekend, well, I have a lot of catch up shit to do since I got mm-hmm. the computer back. Since I got a new computer, I hate it. Um, so like, so like, either Saturday or Sunday or something like that. You know, I'll just sit here and work on some shit to try to get caught up. You know. Yeah. And then the other day of the weekend, we'll try to figure out, you know, what we feel like doing, what kind of fun do we just want to have. And yeah. Last weekend, we wound up. Okay, now this is fun. Keep in mind. Um, so this last is fun. Weekend, keep in mind. <laughs> are you are you convincing me or are you telling me? Uh, I'm I'm probably convincing you. I think. Okay. We start we start setting up a little and taking uh, test shots for Bob. Oh, nice. Yeah. So like that's what I'm laughing at. It's like, you know, this is for fun. This isn't all the work stuff I'm doing. <laughs> you know. Yeah. With the graphics and the editing and all that shit, this is this is the fun now. This is the fun part. But we got it, so I think it's gonna look really pretty badass for a small fucking space. Cool. And where you do know? you have that set up at? Okay, when you walk in my apartment, the small now everybody wall... keep in mind that Bunny's apartment is about the size of a shoebox. Exactly. Um, the small wall that kind of separates the kitchen from the pantry bathroom kind of area. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's about two, three foot. Like, we, we measured it, but I forget exactly what the wall was. 
Is that where the altar used to be? It still is with Buddha and now yeah. there's Stinky Foot from Dark Side Creations, who I'm going to do a show with. Um, uh, dragon kind of ashtray, the the box from Smokes, the yeah. later one, the one that's all latex and shit. Yeah. Um, and we're going to go further with that theme. So I'm like, I'm like, you know, we got to come up with some way of closing up, closing off the kitchen from the shot. Yeah. And, uh, and I thought of a few things. I thought of two men in a trucker right by me. They have to be able to score some refrigerator boxes from time to time, I'm sure. But then I was like, oh, you know what we do? We get, uh, some pegboard. Yeah. So I got a sheet of pegboard. We went to Lowe's, which I hate. Uh, but now I hate Home Depot more. Um, and we got a sheet of pegboard and we had to cut the size. We measured it because, because I was like, you know, I want you to get it from one edge of the, of the wall, you know, and try to center up the other line. Mm-hmm. So it like falls mid shot. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> and she was, you know, she didn't quite get what I was saying at first because she was like, oh, I'm still getting the kitchen. I'm still getting the calendar. Like, Don't worry about the kitchen. So once she got that, I was like, okay, this is, you know, well, she would show them to me and I was like, you know, this really works. Um, and actually she said a lot of this, not me. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, um, once we had the shot, then it was like, okay, well, we just measure that wall, you know, to the height of the frame in the picture, and we get a we get a piece of pegboard to just cut that size. And we did, and now I have mollies in the wall on the edge of that wall, just two mm-hmm. of them, so that we could just grab out the panel and screw it to the fucking wall, you know, maybe a little brushing up, and we got Bob set. Nice, you know, and that's and, now, and that's our episode of filmmaking on a budget. Well, and now I'm like, uh, now how I'm really getting with Bob, it's like you know, let's see what is the best possible because it's just me and her now. Yeah, what's the best possible quality picture? You know, um, lighting, everything like that to shoot these little bob shorts. Yeah. Uh, and the pegboard, I, you know, once I came on the pegboard, I was like, oh, man, you know what we could do with that? We could fucking backlight that. Oh, yeah. Have like a star background almost or something like that? Yeah, yeah. yeah so, we, yeah. you know, we could tilt it right, maybe get something to smoke in front of it so yeah. it shows up better. Yeah. Um, well, as much you as know, you guys have... smoke, you're not. That's not going to be a problem. <laughs> yeah. Possibly, but um, you know, and then we'll just have light streaking into the scene as well. Yeah. Um I, I found that the small LED lights on Amazon are fairly cheap, so I like bought a fucking shitload of them. Yeah. You know, I got like six. Uh, so I can easily backlight it. So you're set up um, for some Kubrick shit, huh? Yeah, kind of. I mean, I, I bought the um, Roscoe set of Campler gels. Mm-hmm. Okay. Which are not going to burn out on a fucking LED light. So, yeah. like, that's probably all I ever need in gels, you know? Now, are you going to smear some... One. Are you going to smear some Vaseline on the lens of the camera to cover up your laugh lines? Uh, like, oh, like they used no. to do in the in the forties or whatever for the actresses. No, no, Bob has to look rugged, raw, and animalistic, and insane with rosy cheeks. And he's he's already got his own Facebook group because that's when I was just thinking about it. Bob was the first thing I started pumping. Yeah, you know. Uh, so he's already got his own Facebook page. Obviously, not much goes on around there. You know, yeah. but I got that picture that um, Jeannie had taken me. We had taken some test shots. Yeah, I saw those. Oh, my God. I fucking love it. Yeah, so do I. I'm like, it's going to be creepy. 
I mean, I even so, even creepier than you usually are. I am so like detached from Bob, you know. Yeah. Like, I see that picture, and that's that's Bob. That's not me. You know what I mean? You, you know what you should do. What? You should do a promotional photo of Bob like peeking around the corner of Laura Palmer's bed. <laughs> That's a Twin Peaks yeah. reference for anybody who didn't get that. Yes, it is. Yeah. Well, yes, I'm going to have to let you go. Like, about. It's almost time for dinner. Okay, dude. So I think that's our, our show for this episode. Uh, the Pope on Film will be coming out this Monday. Uh, it, the first episode, we're going to be talking about the giant claw. Nice. Got anything to hit up? Yep. Uh, Haunted Trailer, now out on DVD, starring Ron Jeremy. It's a hilarious comedy about a crazy mama or two hick brothers or crazy sexy sister who have to, with the help of a low-rent evangelist, rid their trailer of Montezuma, who has come to fulfill the 2012 prophecy. You can also find my books on Amazon.com and Kindle. They are The Alleys Ran Red, Dreaded Friday and Other Tales, and Under the Nom de Plume, Maxwell Robeson. Uh, the Spy in Mom's Clothing. And look soon for Getting School coming to DVD near you. Cool. That's it. All right. Till next time.